Welcome guys, it's Steve Light from Leading Light TV and my special guest today is Derek Mills and Derek Mills is a speaker and author of book One Minute, uh, sorry, Ten Second Philosophy indeed um, and yeah, the reason I wanted to interview Derek was, you know, he had he had a stutter as a child and you know had all those kind of issues around it and it's come a long way since so I just wanted to uh, interview him today and have a chat really. So how are you doing today Derek? Oh, I'm fantastic thanks Steve, yeah doing really good, feeling happy, shining on the inside and sun shining on the outside too. Awesome. How are you okay? Yeah so just, yeah sorry. How are you okay? Yeah I'm really well thanks, thanks. yeah same, same as. Um, things are really great yeah yes. um, yeah so just to kick things off really um I hope you don't mind me asking about your past and stuff but i was intrigued about you know you you had a stutter as a child and you've yes. you know you've totally overcome that is or if you talk a bit about how things were growing up and of course in your early yeah days. please far away i'm happy to share whatever you'd like me to ask I'd like to ask okay well if you if you just start from you know your younger years how was it for you having a stutter and growing up and what was it like for you yeah um awkward <laughs> would be uh, one way of describing it um as you as you know my my stutter uh, arose as of uh, emotional trauma because of the loss of my mother when i was 13 i was i got home from school one day and i was told rather well, shockingly as a neighbor burst into the house she was dead and that's how I was told um, and really the shock of that uh, how it delivered and the shock of her death was I was incredibly close to my mother loved her dearly you know as, as we do when we're, when we're 13 year old boys the most important person in my life and um, when I found out she she died that day I, I literally lost my voice and I found that I couldn't speak and when I went back to school after that um, after the funeral um, I just speak, spoke with this uh, horrible stutter, this speech impediment that stuck with me. And of course, being a, a young a young man at 13, other children <laughs> are quite cruel, you know, because they can be, can't they? So, you know, uh, what can you do? In those days, talking in the back in 1979, there were no, no, oh, let's take him to therapy and let's you know, <laughs> look after him and take care of him. Derek had a stutter and that was it and no one at school or anywhere else who to don't think about it. So it stayed with me right through my school years, which led to, of course, um, lack of self-confidence, low self-esteem, uh, fear around saying what's on my mind because I knew it would come out awkwardly when I spoke. Um, and Steve, even when I went to college, um, I had a nickname called the Stuttering Parrot. That was my friends, you know, so even those close to me gave me a nickname of the Stuttering Parrot. Mm. What was interesting, though, is when I got to my early 20s, is that I went into into financial services sales, and uh, must be my my personality that shone out, <laughs> because um, in the early days I kind of gave myself a bit of a, a, a trick myself to say that when I spoke with customers one to one, because I had this stutter, they'd had to pay pay close attention and to really listen to what I'm saying because of my stutter, and I kind of you know hallucinated or whatever that, that they'd be leaning in closer and hey, listen to me and that would have my business and have my results um mm -hmm. really i guess it just helped me <laughs> so um it was uh, yeah awkward it's funny that when you're living with a stutter you kind of get used to it it's you get used to the awkwardness of it and to the you know the word being trapped in your mouth and you all that action of trying to get them out and you know the people looking at you when you're having this physical strain of trying to get the words out it's not just the emotional strain oftentimes you know people as you know with a stutter will try and physically push the word out and I'd often be really embarrassed having to stand there just kind of doing this you know, straining mm -hmm. with my throat and my lips and my mouth to speak and of course that leads to even lower self-esteem <laughs> so it's uh, yeah there you are so it's no, there, are, there are millions of uh, stutters around the world, and I think we all suffer in a different way, but there are some similarities around social 
exclusion that we feel, the yeah. low self-esteem that we feel as a result of that uh, quote-unquote affliction. Yeah, that's, you know, I can relate to some of what you said and just, um, you know, as you said, that you had a nickname and I guess it, it kind of reinforced that you were a stutterer because everyone kept saying that and like with me, with everyone kept saying, oh, you're so quiet, you're so quiet and then you kind of live into what other people... Um, see you as I guess and oh, I, yeah. I found it quite hard to get out of that mindset of oh this is the way I am and this is the way I'll always be and I'm sure you can relate to that oh, definitely yeah I mean if you're shy you know it's um, one of those things where oh he's shy oh he's quiet and of course that gives you an excuse doesn't it <laughs> yeah. also to be shy and be quiet and as you say a lot of the problems that we all face whether, we, whether we're shy or whether we have a speech impediment one thing that we all face as human beings um, is that we often do live our lives based on what the expectations of other people are for us. You know, who we are and what we do and how we dress and how we walk and the place that we go and all these things. And obviously that, as we both know, that can lead us really away from who we truly are, away from our true self into non-self. And whether we have a, you know, an emotional or physical impediment um, in our lives, it can take decades to get away from that the shackles mm. of being constrained by what, you, by what you think the world would have you be. And what I learned, and I know that from what your stuff you've learned, is that uh, one surefire way to unhappiness is to live a life based on what you think the world would have you be. And um, that's the wrong path for any of us. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's, it's interesting. I've, I think I've only just recently... Um, shed my label of shyness I guess because yes. I felt that you know the days where I felt unconfident I I assumed that that was me slipping back to old ways okay so the, way see, the way I see it now is I'm just having a bad day everyone <laughs> <laughs> everyone has um, you know bad days and yeah. a lot of people who can relate to my issues that I had in the past you yes. kind of you're kind of trying to move forward and gain confidence and then all of a sudden you're having a really bad day, you're feeling very anxious and you think, oh no, all that all that stuff I've done is wasted now. Oh, yes. Yeah. I realise now that, you know, that's not the case. I just had one particular bad day. It doesn't mean anything about me as a person. It's just, I'm having a bad day, that's it. Exactly. I mean, even the greatest among us will have bad a bad day and many bad days. And sometimes, yeah. you know, it's... Um, that those bad days you know, roll into weeks and months and sometimes years and it's recognizing that um, you know, the, the behavior in the day does, does not make you who you are mm. the, the blessing of this life is if we can get to sleep tonight we can wake up with a brand new day and that's not some rose tinted rose tinted approach you know of all that is wonderful part of my philosophy is that actually we have we only have one day and that's the mm. today day so whatever happened yesterday, you no, know, you know, we can't be happy yesterday. Mm. And we can't be happy in the future because happiness is a now experience. So all we can do and all we can be is experience happiness in the moment. So if I was if I was unhappy yesterday, well that was yesterday. If, if God willing, you know, I wake up this morning, I've got a brand new day, and I can be myself. And it's the being of self that helps us to be happy today. Mm. So two concepts there. One is around. It's us being ourselves that helps us to be happy, not what we achieve, but who we are. And the second thing is, is we, we, we experience happiness in the moment. You know, it's about today. It's about right now. And, and when we learn to live in today's and keep ourselves present, that enables us to be happy right now. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I think I've just really recently realised that myself. Like... I think it was Thursday last week, I had a really stressful day and was quite angry and, you know, just a, a dreadful day. But then the day after I woke up and it was amazing and yeah. I felt totally different because before I'd look back at yesterday and dwell on the bad day, which would carry on the bad day from, you know, the next day rather than drawing a line in the sand, this is a new day and, yeah. and it was a great day. Absolutely. And that's, that's one of the first times I've really 
realised that there only is today. Yes, absolutely. And of course, it is um, ancient wisdom. Yeah. Because uh, two thousand years ago, Christ taught, you know, in the words he gave us to remember, he said, uh, "Give us this day." No, he didn't say, "No, think about tomorrow." He didn't. In fact, he actually said, "Have no worry about tomorrow." And I began over time, as well, after I woke up a few years ago, to realise that the only way to not have to worry about tomorrow, because at first that was a challenge to me. I thought, "Well, how do you not worry about tomorrow? How do you have no worry for tomorrow? How will tomorrow take care of itself?" There's only one answer to that: that is to live in today, to be all you can be today, to be your light and shine your light and say your words and be your truth today and take action today and be happy today. And when we do this, whatever futures that we're blessed with, they become a new today and they become better because of what we do today. So the, the idea of a, a give us this day, it's more than a concept. It's more than just a, a theory. We only, we, I literally know that we only have today. And I think as Einstein once talked, when he talked about the future, he said that all time exists at the same time. But the next phrase really interested me because he then said, <coughs> Even when we get to that future, all we have is one more now. So there are only nows. So to me, there are only todays. And if we live as if that were true, because it is, we can realize that's where happiness is. That, as you know, that's why I don't set goals for the future, because when we set goals for the future, we defer our happiness to the achievements of said thing. Mm. Um, no, because none of us set goals to be unhappy. So by definition, we must set our goals to be happier or more comfortable or more content. The problem is with goals, that's where the happiness stays, out in the future. And uh, part of the philosophy stays actually if it's about today. Um, be here today, be here now, and be your true self today. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? We all know that as a concept that there's only now, but it's when you really realize and have kind of a realization of that. Yeah. that I guess you have to ponder on the question, don't you? Because I, I didn't really get it at first because I was just living in the past and trying to get somewhere in the future. And mm. that's where, you know, so many people are in that way, aren't they? They're yeah. being held up by things that have happened in the past and they're trying to reach goals and yeah. they're never really present. And, you know, you can relate to that. I yeah, can yeah. relate to that. And I think, I think that's, that's very wise because when you think about that, it's almost like you're being hamstrung by the past. <laughs> you're being restricted yeah. because of this future. And if you think about the past, of course, you can't be occupied. You can't go and live it again. I mean, there are lots of techniques that people teach, can teach uh, and, uh, us about how you, know, you can go back and do all time, stuff down your timeline. But you know what? You're here. You're here right now. When it comes to the, to the future, the, the challenge is that is that um, the more we live our lives in the future, it just, there are two things occur. One is that it pulls us away from today. And if happiness is a now experience, see my happiness next week is for next week. It's it's because it's a now experience. So when I get there, it's only got, I've only got a now. When we're there, what we really want to help people to understand is that when they begin to live their life based on what's going to happen one day, is that you may not get one day. My mother died when she was 35 years old. And she may have had goals and plans for her future, but she didn't get to live that future. And many people you know and I know plan to be themselves one day, you know, when they retire, then I'll be myself. Then I'll give those hugs, do the thing, you know, take the photographs, walk with it with the kids or help that charity or share my love, share my light. They're going to do that stuff one day when, you know, one day is, is not a guarantee. So if we've, we've just got today and the second thing about um, we put pressure on ourselves when we live in the future. And there's an old thing I heard way back in the 80s about pressure creating diamonds. You know, if you put pressure on yourself, like your house you're going to have, the income you're going to have, you're going to get one day, the part you're going to, going to be in your life, the money you're going to have, the, all these amazing things, you put pressure on ourselves because they told us, well, at least told, told me, that pressure creates diamonds. And I thought, and at the time, you know, it seemed actually, Steve, it seemed, right, yeah, pressure creates diamonds, you know, pressure over time, a bit of heat make a diamond, I'm a diamond, so that's great. But when I, when I began to realize that there are such things as, as myth metaphors. Now, metaphors are just myths, and pressure creating diamond is just a myth metaphor because it, the pressure can crush things. 
and the diamond is created by being crushed. Now, notice what happens around the world. Diamonds are so rare <laughs> that only, only a few things become diamonds because that crushing effect. But the crushing and the pressure does not create diamonds of everything else. Otherwise, there don't be diamonds under, no, there'd be acres of diamonds right now. So what we're finding is that um, the, pressure, the pressure of setting goals and stacking them up what, years and decades after decades, putting pressure on ourselves, does not make diamonds of most people. It works for some, but only a few. For the rest of the people, it crushes their spirit, it takes the happiness away from them now, and it makes them have a gap between who they really think they should be and who they truly are. So there are many issues around um, living in the future and goal planning, um, goal setting, is actually one of the challenges that I have with most teachers around the world that teach, you must set goals to be happy and successful. And I just ask, well, how's that working out for the world? No, how's that working out for you, me, and everybody else? The answer is, not very. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I was the same as you. I, was, uh, I thought that you had to be stressed and pressured to get what you want. That's, yeah. I just learned from so many different teachers and stuff, and that became my belief that you have to struggle. But yeah. that's just one way of looking at it. I'm, I'm so much happier now... Um, just being myself and doing what I love doing and taking every day as it comes and this it's all it's so much lighter as a lot of weight off my shoulders and I realize now that I don't have to get somewhere to be happy that I can yep. just be you know maybe I'm not well, I'm not happy every day but yep. I'm, I'm a lot more happy that I'm not trying to chase something yeah um, I love the idea what you just said though it's about um, you know, you, you can you can just be happy, you know, in today, rather than when you get something. Mm. It's, um, it's simple, but actually, it's what it is. You know, I, I call those I, those ideas and those concepts. I call them the truth, because it is true. <laughs> you know, it's about capturing this moment and working on being centered and being our true self today. Um, and, and at least with the things, because if we can be happier in our, within ourselves. No, no, we can't be happy every single day because, like you just said, you know, if you were to lose, if you were to lose a, uh, a dear one, or you know, or your business were to fail, or you had your house repossessed, it's tough to say be happy today. You know, so that should about being real. But it's a really saying that happiness is an experience. Stop preserving it. Stop pushing it off to the future. Mm. Feel that today. Then the idea is that you bring your happiness. We bring our light into our meetings with others, into our experience with others. You know, every one of us, I think, could benefit if from just the today, from this moment, we brought our happiness and our true self into every business meeting that we had, if we're in business. Um, and I know so many people that have coached and mentored over the last few years now, who uh, may even do a meditation in the morning and be happy and blissful, be really who they are. And they go, they go into their office, go around their work, and they don't bring that happiness and that blissful state with them into their meetings. And they're struggling in their daily life. It's like, it's like finding some gem inside of you and some real great light and some energy and some wisdom and some peace and some happiness. And you say, okay, meditation done. I'm going out there now to struggle and battle the world. And say, <laughs> you know, no, no, no. Bring the meditation, bring that place with you into your day. And people will recognize you. People will begin to see you in ways they've never seen you in the past, when you bring that light into your meetings, into your day, in every part of your day. Does that, <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, it really does. I'm, I'm laughing because I was exactly like that. I was trying to force myself to meditate every day and, and, um, and you know, feel good for a minute and then just carry on stressfully into my work and ticking off stuff and rushing around all day and then, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I went, I went to a meditation class because um, I thought that I should go to a class so I could understand it more. Yeah. But the thing is, I turned down a nice evening with my girlfriend and I left meditation and I was feeling more stressed than when I turned up. <laughs> I wished I just stayed at my at home and relaxed with my girlfriend because I'd have had a much more relaxing time. Yes, indeed. It's just funny how we try and put these things in place as a strategy rather than... I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 well, it's, it's, 
it's just putting pressure again you know if I meditate every day then I'll be happier yeah. um, it's just another way of putting pressure on I suppose it's, it's, isn't it? yeah. I, I think you're right because it's uh, a, a meditation uh, is for us because meditation for me is about bringing myself back to who I really am and holding that space and also in that space what I've, what I've found is my my wisdom is available to me my sagacity is free is free flowing ideas and thoughts and concepts and connection with other people and things is there in that space can you think of a better space to bring to your business <laughs> you know can you think of a better space to bring into your relationships so it's, your so meditation is not just for the class it's for the day to have bringing that and holding that space for the whole of your day especially in what I would call the left brain conscious worldly parts of our day as if the more you're dealing with a left brain conscious logical part of your day or your business is to bring all that stuff that you really have into that space um, and that's where your genius awakens and can give you guidance and wisdom that your thinking mind or your ego was never going to access and um, so there's far more to this than you know, just have a meditation and then go on my life. I'm saying, no, what, what do you find in your meditation? Where are you in that place? Bring that into your life because that's probably closer to your truth than, than you're trying to think about stuff. Mm. Yeah, so you mentioned in your book that you did a, you did a talk, um, I can't remember what conference it was at, it was at a international speakers conference or something. Oh, yes, yeah. And you, um, you just spoke from the heart, really, didn't you? You weren't no. trying to impress anyone. You were just, um, I guess you were in that state of mind then, weren't you? Yeah. Just letting the words come and trusting yourself that you, you know, that you had it in you to not say the right thing, but yeah. just... Well, actually, you, I love the way you've, because you, you're kind of really getting me um, flowing here, because... What's really important about what you've just said is that when I was in, I did a talk to the Global Speaker Summit to, uh, I, was a, I was a brand new speaker, I think it was my fifth ever talk, and um, <laughs> Universe conspired to get me there, we won't go into that now, but my fifth ever talk, I'm to be uh, doing a talk to the Global Speaker Summit, speakers all around the world, these amazing people in, in the room, and I just um, trusted myself, which is why I picked up what you just said. I began to trust myself, and I trusted what was coming through me to just to be. I knew I knew my stuff, but then I just had to trust. And the reason why I say that's such an important thing, Steve, is that most people in their lives, you know, like I used to be for my previous 18 years before I woke up, they um, they would trust their next door neighbour, trust the media, trust the paper, trust a friend across the fence, trust their colleagues, and they won't trust themselves. And most people have problems in their life. When I come to counselling with people, I often say that, you know, just have this as, as, as an idea, that a lot of the challenges and problems of your life you've come to me today about, is it, because up until this point, you have not trusted yourself. It's the lack of trust in self that has led you here. So it's about a bit like a bit, developing a relationship with ourselves, where we begin to trust ourselves, maybe on the small things, to listen to the, the guidance from within, the inner voice, the intuition, the wisdom that comes from in. And follow that, maybe on small things first, to develop the relationship with ourselves. And as we then develop that relationship, we begin to trust ourselves with the bigger things that come through us. And the wonderful thing about that, as each of us begins to trust ourselves, is our true self, the being who we really are, as we trust ourselves, our true self begins to trust us with more things, with more wisdom with bigger chunks of guidance if you, if, you, if you like and it trusts us with things that we can handle that may cause us problems so trusting myself in that space that when I spoke at the International um, Speaker Summit was really to say actually you know what I could think about this all day long my ego could work on it all day long I'm not clever enough to know what to say why don't I just trust what's inside of me and let it flow and that's what I did to the degree where at one point I was listening to myself speaking <laughs> without knowing what was coming up next. Mm. But it turned out to be okay because it led to a lot of uh, opportunities. Um, so the message for me from, from that and what, from what you brought up there is to begin to trust ourselves 
And if we haven't been practiced in doing that, what we begin today to trust ourselves. If we're walking somewhere and our inner wisdom, our inner voice says, go left instead of right, well, go left and trust yourself. Sit here on the train, sit at that table for dinner. Look, on the smaller things that get us to develop the relationship. And when we fall in love, when we'll our deepest relationship in our life exists, we don't go from hello to, you know, <laughs> full on loving relationship. We go from hello and the relationship develop. We don't go from a hello to let's get married in a minute. Yeah, so it develops. I think it's the same with ourselves. We have to go back to the source and begin to trust ourselves and develop once more that relationship. As you know, with all trusting relationships, you know, the more trust there is, the more trust there is, and more is revealed. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, so just to touch on relationships mm -hmm. briefly, because we haven't got much time. Um, okay. I find that, you know, so many people are looking for a relationship to, uh, for happiness as well, you know, um, like if we're chasing money and we become happy when. Yes. It's the same, it works the same with relationships, doesn't it? Like, yep. I know that, you know, we are happy being with someone else, but I mean, to, to fulfill the lack of, in, you know, um, lack of self-esteem or whatever inside us we we tend to think that someone else will fill that hole for us but in the end it doesn't work that way does it no, no. no. you're right when i uh, when i wrote the 10 second philosophy um clearly before i woke up i had a fractured relationship with myself i also had a fractured relationship with everyone else around me prior to my waking up you know my um I couldn't possibly do that with my wife. My kids, uh, I wasn't a great dad because I was thinking, well, you know, I can't be a great dad. I didn't have really any friends to count, a couple of people that I can't count as friends and, and not much else. Mm. Um, I wasn't a great son, I wasn't a great brother because it, because of where I was, it affected all those relationships. Mm. When I discovered myself, here's what happened. <laughs> no, I became happier in the, in the, in the moment and as if by magic, my wife became a better wife. <laughs> my kids became better kids. My dad a better dad, my brothers and sisters. Everyone around me became better because I was seeing them with fresh eyes. Mm. Look through my truth, through my... Uh, so those relationships became real and better. You know, when you look, there's a phrase called, you know, someone has angel eyes. I think when, when I realized now, when someone has angel eyes, it's not, to me, it doesn't mean they've got beautiful eyes, which are beautiful eyes, which are angelic. To me, it means they are able to look at others as if they are angels. To see the angel in another means that that's what angel eyes really mean. And I developed some angel eyes, so I could see everyone around me is actually beautiful, wonderful beings. And of course, when you're surrounded by beautiful, wonderful beings, I mean, hey, yeah, that makes you happy. <laughs> so <laughs> those, those same people were in my life before, and because where I was, I couldn't see them. So. Above all the things I wrote in the book, when it comes to my personal happiness, it's my waking up to myself. And then, of course, it massively energized all my relationships. So the 10 second philosophy is, is not just about some thoughts in our head, it's about how does this impact our lives to help us to be happier in our lives, the real life, in business, in our relationships. These are the key points of the book. Mm. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on your book, but yeah. just relating to what you just said, um, I, I really understand what you're saying. It's like, um, uh, since I've been becoming, you know, happy in myself, yeah. I've, I've caught myself thinking, wow, everyone's really nice. Um, <laughs> they haven't changed at all. I just, <laughs> I just view the world differently. Like, 10 years ago, I was so angry of everyone and you know everyone in the world was an arsehole and yeah. oh why didn't they understand me and all this kind of stuff but once you you know once you do kind of wake up to how things are and you're happy in yourself yeah. like you said everyone around you even though you know they might not be nice all the time or whatever you just see them we're, we're all human. different yeah. eyes yeah, yeah. And, and, and Steve most people are not happy because they're not who they truly are. 
And you can't be truly happy as not you. Happiness comes from finding out who you are and being that person in your life. That's, and as you, when we know the opposite of that is that if you want a sure path to unhappiness, is try and be what, the, what you think the world would have you be. You're going to be unhappy. Try and be what the media, what celebrity and what society thinks you should be. Try and be that. Try and mind read the world and be what you think you worked out they want you to be. Sure, it's a sure path to unhappiness. And it's about being who we are and having the courage or having the daring to be ourselves. And then when we, when we dare to be ourselves, this has a real practical application. Because I often talk to business people and I say, when you are authentic, balanced and centered, the connection you have with other people increases exponentially. And you have for your business will go through the roof as well as your relationships. Mm. Because you become the person people turn to when it gets dark. Because no matter how dark it is out there, if you turn on the light, every light turns towards the light. So if you can be your true self, you become the light, not just for yourself, but for others. And as you turn on their light, it illuminates the path for you as well. So we all benefit when we are each our real and our true self. Yeah. Just going going back to the, the true self thing, um, what, what would you say to anyone, you know, someone might be listening to this and thinking, well, I am myself, you know, five years ago I couldn't relate to this this kind of conversation and what would you say to someone listening to this who's thinking well I am myself I, I can't be anyone else what how do you differentiate that from um, someone who I don't know I'm not sure how to no, explain I, I think I, don't, yeah, I think what someone says I am myself I say that you're blessed to be oneself is to be blessed because that's 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 the, that's the center of your happiness. I also would say that it's about discovery because there's far more to each of us than we've ever tapped into thus far. So it is about saying, being myself, it's not an on-off situation like a light switch where I am myself and I'm not myself. We can to less or greater degrees be more of our true self. And our true self is actually genius. It's part of the source, it's part of intelligence energy. We're part of the universe. Whether you're spiritual or quantum physicist or both, we know we're part of something else. And that, that is something else is, has wisdom and sagacity, and that comes through each of us. So to be our true self is a continuum. I'm my true self now, but I'll know more of my true self, and I'll be more of my true self. God willing, if I get to 97, I'll be more of my true self, because I'll discover more of who I am, more of what's inside of me, more of my gifts, my abilities, my talents, and whoever I am, my light, to discover more of that, it's a continuum, and to be So what I would say is, stay on that path, and discover more, and there's more. Whatever wisdom comes from that place, speak the word. The words, thoughts, questions, phrases, ideas, and feelings that come from that place, be that in the world. So whatever you really feel you are is inside of you. It's not just a state of being, because if it's just a question of being, Many people um, would have thoughts about themselves. See, I meet lots and lots of um, life coaches around the world who philosophically know all this, or what I call, know this stuff, meditate and have you know, um, loving moments inside themselves, know who they are. But when I sit down with them and say, I'm struggling, Derek, really struggling, bills are like this, or they're overweight, I'm thinking, hold for a second. If wisdom is there, we can use that in all of our lives, mm. all of our lives. So, okay, so how do you bring that wisdom so you're not struggling into the month to pay your bills? Because if you're struggling, then that, that brings stress and that brings worry and concerns. I'm talking about some of the most beautiful people I've ever met on this planet, you know, who share and would give it the last bit of energy or money, whatever, whatever it is. But sometimes they're struggling to make it, to make it in my, what, what they, people might call the right world, the real world. And I say there is just one world. And when we get to be our true selves in all of our world, not just our teachings and our philosophies, but how do we bring that wisdom into, into our life? So pay attention, I would say, to this person. Pay attention to your wisdom and begin to bring that wisdom into all your daily activities. And you're going to see yourself achieve and do and be things in this day that will shock and surprise you because you have a genius inside of you. I'm a genius, that's what I discovered. After 18 years of being a failing adult, um, I realized I was a genius which means that I must have had that genius inside of me all the way along, all that time. 
if I'm a genius, let's put on the very first page of the book, if I'm a genius, every single one of us is a genius, every single one of us has a guru that could revolutionize our lives, and maybe even the whole world. So, stay on the path. Wow, awesome. Yeah, I, I, can, I can relate to that, definitely. It's, it, it seems to me that the only thing that is in the way of our genius is our, is our negative thinking, I guess, our, our beliefs about what we can achieve. And once we trust ourselves, we can... Absolutely. There's really no limit to what we can achieve. No. Well, there isn't, because uh, even if you talk to the... Uh the most unspiritual quantum physicists they'll tell you and me that everything is energy and everything is energy and they don't, they're not saying there are 97 or 97 million or 7 billion types of energy they're actually saying that everything is energy so we know that we have huge potential inside of us you know you can look at the you can cut open an apple and you can count the number of seeds as someone once said inside the apple what you can't see is how many apples will come from those seeds I think to myself yeah you can when you look inside yourself, you don't really know what's inside. That's why we must continue to go inside and look what's possible for us. And we could, you know, um, literally revolutionize our lives. You know? And one of the practical things, I'm aware that when we have conversations like this now, this doesn't be aware that, you know, that when we have conversations like this, some people are going, that's lovely, very so far, so far, lovely words that Steve said there and Derek said that, and that was nice, whatever. But you know what? How do I do this in my life today? How do I get this to work for me today? And one of the key things that came out of my genius was to stop setting goals and to start setting daily standards to live by. And standards are where we go inside and we consider in the seven key areas of our life, we consider the basis, criteria, level, quality or rules. What are the basis, criteria, qualities, levels or rules that are right for us? Not right from our thinking or from our ego, but going inside and considering. In these seven areas of my, of my life, my personal health and fitness, my environment, my relationships, my family, my emotions, my career, my time, what are the right standards, which are the basis criteria, levels, quality and rules that we live our lives by? What are the right standards for my life in those areas? And, set, and go within to find the answers. Go inside ourselves to sit and hold a space and find the answers within. And then set those standards out. And here's the, here's the last bit commit to being and living at that standard just for today. No pressure, not for the next three weeks or three years or quarter or next 20 year business plan, whatever. Just discover who you are, what stands the right for you and be that just for today. Take the pressure off just until we get ahead.